So here we have found out the tensile stresses. Uh, sigma t is the force per unit area and the force is given the tensile forces P and the cross section area for the socket is also mentioned here. So by using this you can find out tensile stresses present in that the socket end. Then again based on that the tensile forces the shear fluid occurs in these sockets at the end where the total forces is present in the parallel directions of that this collar of that the sockets. So these gray colors indicate the failure of that the socket at that end and these are the four zone is present one two and the opposite to these are the total four cross section area is present where the shear failure is occurs. So our aim is to again find out the area where it is fell. So here D2 is a diameter of the spigot, D4 is the diameter of the socket collar and C is a clearance of this socket collar and the thickness of the socket collar. So by that you can find out the total cross section area where the shear failure is occur so is a D2 and D4 and the C by using that equations you can find the toys in bracket D4 minus D2 bracket complete into C whole bracket come to C is a total cross section area against the shear failure. So here you can find out the tau is a shear failure shear stresses is equal to force per unit area. Then the socket is also fails against the crushing failure is a sigma c. So there this quarter is pushes and this collar thickness and is maybe the fail due to the crushing stresses. So this blue color is indicate and the cross section area where the total crushing stresses is occurs. And here you can find out that again d2 is again the diameter of this figure and d4 is the diameter of the socket collar. So these are the area you can the cross section area is equal to d4 minus d2 into t so in this way you can find out the crushing stress sigma c is equal to force per unit area and sigma c is equal to p divided by this value d4 minus d2 bracket complete into the t so in this way you can find out the crushing stresses then our aim is to find out the uh, dimensions of the uh, quarters so quarter is failed by the share so Typically this end the the collar is present for the socket and the hole is present for the spigot and due to this collar the forces distribute in the two directions for the socket side and for the spigot side one. So means due to these force conditions the quarter is fail at the two different cross sections based on that the load apply conditions. So here this, are, this area is there where the quarter is failed and these are the cross sectional area for the shear failure. So in this area you can find out by using the equations. So here T is the thickness of the quarter, B is the width of the quarter. So it's a B into T is a one area, again B into T is a another area, so it's a twice b into t is a total cross section area for the shear failures about that the quarter so you can find out the shear failure tau is equal to force per twice b into 2 is a cross section area then maybe this quarter is failed due to the bending failures so obviously based on the forces conditions the bending failures occur in this pin so this two end the different forces is present so is suppose is a p this force is nothing but the P divided by 2 and P divided by 2 and due to that the bending is occurs in this quarter in the like as the bottom figure. So avoid the bending failures our aim is to find out the free body diagram first and based on the free body diagram you can find out the maximum bending stresses occur in that the pins. So T and B is the thickness of this quarter. The P is a total load is present on that the quarter and at this end the P by 2 is a force. So it's based on the strength of machine element you can find out the maximum bending failures occur in this pin. So in this way you can find out the total distance. You can convert these forces in the different way P by 2, P by 2 like as a UDL and the ULs. At this end the UL is present and based on that the UL and the UDL you can find out the matching maximum bending stresses present in that the pin and we know the maximum bending stresses for this pin is a p divided by 2 in bracket d2 divided by 2 plus x is the distance is stresses in bracket minus p divided by 2 into z 
and when the total bending stress is nothing but sigma b is equal to m b into y divided by i so in this case y is equal to b divided 2 is the total height of the quarter divided by 2 and i is the moment of inertia of this quarters so is a typical rectangular cross section is present based on the, that you can find out the tb cube divided by 12 so you can put this all value in this equations and find out the bending stresses so these are the various failures mode is present in that the quarter joints so is a typical process for design the uh, quarter joints again the static load conditions in this basic procedure first to calculate the dimensions of the quarter joints consists of the following step the first step is calculate the diameter of each rod by using the equations d is equal to under top 4p divided by pi into sigma d so is based on the sigma tensile stresses the equation is convert and you can find out the determinant sigma t is equal to p divided by cross section area of the diameter means p is, uh, sorry sigma t is equal to force divided by pi by 4 d is to square d square so in this way the reshuffle this equation and you can find out the diameter then second is calculate the thickness of the quarter by the empirical relations so t is equal to 0 0.31 d is the 3 times d so the d is the diameter of that d end rod so in this way you can find out the t then calculate the diameter d2 of these pigots on the basic of the tensile stresses so is a p is equal to pi by 4 and d square minus d2 into 2 these equations 4.2 p is given for this here so then when the value of p t and the sigma t are the substitute the above expressions become a quadratic equations and you can find out this p value then calculate the outside diameter d1 of the sockets on the basis of the tensile stresses in the sockets by using these equations p is equal to under root of pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square minus in bracket d1 minus d2 bracket come into 2 whole bracket come to sigma t so just you can reshuffle the equation sigma t sigma c and tau and based on that you can find out some value of that quarter joints when value of p d2 t and sigma t are the substitute the above expressions become the quadratic equations and you can find out that the value then the diameter of spigot collar d3 and diameter of this socket quarter d4 are calculated by the following empirical relations and d3 is nothing but the 1.5 times d and d4 is nothing but the 2.4 times d then the dimension of the a and c are the calculated by the following empirical relations these are the clearance between the collars and the supports a is equal to c and is nothing but the 0 0.7 d then calculate the width b of the quarter by shear and the bending and select the width which is the maximum between these two equation the equation is given is based on the bending stresses check the crossing and the shear stresses in the spigot end respectively by using that equation you can put this all value in that equations and check the stresses even check the crossing and the shear stresses in the socket respectively based on these equations calculate the thickness t1 of the spigot quarter by the following implicit relations t1 is equal to 0 0.45 d and the taper of the quarter is so means just the equation is given based on the stresses sigma t sigma c and the tau you can put these equations in terms of the forces per based on the cross section area and reshuffle that equations based on that actual value and find out the dimensions of this quarter and the spigot as well as the sockets and based on that dimension again you can check this dimension safe or the unsafe if the calculated stresses is greater than the actual stresses then you can say the dimension is set and if it is not then then you can modify the dimensions so the uh, uh, conclusion of this lecture is the based on the short answer questions what is the use of the quarter joints why quarter having the slant side and what are the difference failure presents on the quarter joints so students thanks for watching these lectures in next lecture we are going to discuss on the design the difference machine elements for against the static load conditions thank you